Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna to show you the easy, 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 quick way to create printed table numbers, um, no matter what your layout or design is. So this is what we're gonna use as our sample. We actually don't even have any numbers on these. We just have a place and then the country that it's located in underneath. But this will work the same way if you have like a table number up here and a name down here or a name here with the number below it. Um, it doesn't matter, we'll show you exactly how to do it, uh, no matter what combination of names and numbers you're using. So we've created this design in Illustrator. Um, this is not my only artboard. If it is your only artboard, you can save it as an Illustrator file or as a PDF, whatever you prefer. If it is the only artboard, you either need it to be the first artboard, if you save as an Illustrator file, or you can save it just as a PDF. So what we've done is actually remove the sample name there, my computer takes a sec to catch up sometimes, and saved artboard 18 with our bleeds here as a PDF. So then we're gonna go into InDesign and we're gonna create a file which is gonna look just like that artboard. So it's five by seven with an eighth of an inch bleed on each side, which we're gonna need. You don't always need those. If you have questions about bleeds, check out our tutorial on how to prep files for digital printing where it'll explain all of that. And the last piece you'll need is this Excel sheet. Um, it's I called it table number merge file. And once you create it once, you don't need to do it ever again. So you can do this on Excel. I've done it on Google Sheets. You can use numbers, any program where you can download as a CSV file. So typically this file just has the numbers and then spelled out because these are the common things that we use. If you're gonna put the word table, you don't actually need to do that because you can add that um, in InDesign in a second. For this particular project, I've added in all the names that we're working with as well. And then you just go to File, Download, CSV, comma, Separated Value. So make sure you have that CSV file saved on your computer. Then we'll go back to InDesign. And for our design portion, we are going to just place that PDF we saved. And this always looks a little blurry. This is just what happens to me. Um, so to change this, you just need to go to View, Display Performance, and High Quality Display. Or just click Alt Control H. We'll do the same thing. And then just make sure, you know, this is centered correctly. It should be fine because it was the same size as our file and it goes all the way out to those red bleed lines. So then we're just gonna do a simple data merge. So if you've watched our data merge tutorial, you know how to do this. So utilities, data merge, and then you go up to this little drop down and select the data source. We have our table number merge file. And then what you're gonna do is just fill in everything you need here. So we want just the name and table columns. And those are both gonna be centered and then we can head back to Illustrator if we wanna grab our specific font and formatting information. So this is 124 points. This is 29 points with a 100 degree tracking. So this one is OWASP. This font is pretty cool. OWASP regular. What do we say? 124. And it's going to show up as nothing just because this is really long here. And then table, we're going to change to bell, all caps, and give it 100 here, regular. Okay, so we'll mess with the spacing a little bit. And then what you can do is just preview that to see what it's going to look like. And I think what we're actually going to do is make this as tall as it needs to be. And then we're going to go to object text frame options and do the vertical justification in the center because we are gonna have a few different, some of these are gonna have to have multiple lines, et cetera. So we'll just do that um, to make that easier. And there's a few things that we definitely wanna edit, but with table numbers, there's so few that I find it's just easier to edit them individually because we're gonna have to change some sizes, font sizes and all kinds of things. So for now, this looks pretty good. And then all you have to do is just click this little drop down again and then do create merge document. And then just make sure, you know, all these settings are the same for whatever you want it to be. Usually for doing addresses, we remove 
empty field blank lines, but we don't really have that in this case. You'll see that we did have records below here. So those will actually show up, um, they'll show up as empty because we don't have anything in these fields, but since we do have things in other fields, they'll still show up. So we wanna stop that from happening. So we do wanna stop at 22, which is actually gonna be record number 21 because it starts counting uh, like Capri Palace here would be record one. So we just wanna go one through 21. So we'll do a range, cause you see that this has one through 30 and we actually don't have 30 tables for this particular piece. So we'll do one through 21. And it'll tell you if any of the text went outside of the text box, which ours has not. And then we have all of this information just fully plugged in here. So you can imagine if you're just doing something with one, two, three, et cetera, it would all pretty much be good to go, except some numbers are a little bit wider or taller. So you may wanna individually edit those. And you'll see that we went back to blurry tiles. So I'm just gonna do Alt Control H and bring that back to full high quality display. So then we're just gonna kinda go through each of these. I'm not gonna make you uh, sit through all of this. And once we find a good number for this, yeah. So somewhere around 80 is gonna be a good number for this. And this P looks a little bit left heavy, so it looks a little off center, so we're just gonna edit that a tiny bit as well. But that's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. And now that we've figured this out, we'll actually put Il Pelicano on the same line. And then we'll go back and change our line spacing to 80. And this one should go a little bit more. Again, this, this font has a lot of strange, crazy things, which I love, but also make the editing a little bit case by case. And with table numbers, you kind of want to make things as large as possible just because you want them to be functional. You want them to be seen across a room. So that's why we're putting some of these on two lines. And then, you know, I might go through and make a couple of these just a few points larger. I'm actually going to put the blue marlin on two lines. And then we can make the text a tad larger, which is always a good thing here. Okay, so there we go. This took me about 15 minutes total, also with explaining everything to you guys. Um, so it's pretty easy to do, and especially if you have numbers, you'll get used to how everything looks and which ones you need to edit. So there'll be a little bit less uh, post-editing that you have to do. But this is way faster than, for instance, going into Illustrator and you know, copying this artboard and then retyping the names and making sure they're all the same and all of that. I just spelled my own name wrong. But anyway, so it's a lot faster. Um, it's a lot less prone to error because you have everything in this spreadsheet ready to go, um, especially if you're just using numbers, it's way even easier, so. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you want more information on data merging, definitely check out our video that we'll link at the end here. And as always, subscribe for more tips and tricks for creative business owners. Thanks everyone.